உங்கள் பாரம்பரிய குடும்பத்தில் சார்ந்தவர்கள் ஒவ்வொரு மாதமும் முதல் சனிக்கிழமை என்று நாம் பல்வேறு கூட்டங்களை நடத்தி வருகிறோம் அதில் இன்று எந்த கூட்டங்களை பற்றி என்ன பேசப்படாருங்கிறத பால சாமி அதுக்கு முன்னாடி தமிழ் ஹெரிட்டேஜ் ட்ரஸ்ட் பற்றின ஒரு சின்ன ப்ரீஃப் இன்ட்ரக்ஷன் கொடுத்தேன் இது வந்து நான் ஒரு ரஃப்லி த்ரீ இயர்ஸ் பேக் இ ஸ்டார்ட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஸோ அது லாஸ்ட் த்ரீ இயர்ஸ் அண்ட் பெட் மோர் வி ஹவ் பீன் ஆர்கனைசிங் தீஸ் மீட்டிங்ஸ் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் அவர் ஆக்டிவிட்டீஸ் தி மந்த்லி மீட்டிங் வேர் வி ஹவ் எக்ஸ்பர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் எந்தூசியாஸ் ஆஃப் அபவுட் ஏ ஹெரிட்டேஜ் டாபிக் So it could be about painting, it could be about architecture, it could be about sculpture, but also about uh, literature, about uh, grammar, uh, and music, of course, and dance. Uh, in addition to this, we have been organizing a yearly study group. Uh, for the last uh, three years, we have done this, and uh, uh, the next one will be our fourth trip. The first one was to Mahabalipuram. where we did the science seminar where we stayed there for about four days and uh, learned uh, a lot about uh, Mahabalipur. The second one was to Ajanta and Dora. The third one was to Pudukote. And the fourth one is going to be uh, on Shiran. So you will uh, soon get the announcement and those of you interested, please join me. Uh, we have been also organizing uh, summer camps for children for the last uh, two years. Uh, this happens in month of May. Uh, this is primarily uh, organized for the children in the age group of about uh, 10 to 15 we have since last year we have been uh, last year was the first time we organized uh, what we call as pechi kachi uh, it happens during the month of uh, december where there is music festival here uh, we want to offer an alternate music not to draw people away from that but to basically bring all the people who come for these uh, uh, you know, music series to also listen to fragments of our uh, uh, culture last year it was uh, uh, a, a, a bunch of uh, lectures which covered from sangam era to the nayak period uh, it was uh, everything from the literature to uh, uh, ganekoda chola from uh, architecture to uh, finally a dance performance uh, which was uh, uh, raguna uh, ragunatha vidayam uh, so this time uh, we have uh, been thinking about one specific topic which is painting so the coming uh, december will be uh, on uh, a variety of paintings of india so it be again a focused uh, theme so some of it uh, now we are also going to see today uh, so these are these are our uh, programs we are basically interested in documenting in uh, you know, learning and propagating these ideas uh, i i i would say that you know we are all experts in our field in fact we don't know anything at all it's only our interest in learning which has brought us together uh, so you are all uh, free to join in you know, you know we, we need uh, your support we want you to uh, talk about our programs that we are we have been conducting so we will have uh, more people uh, coming and attending these lectures uh, the last three lectures i would say uh, really at the top of uh, the programs of uh, the last 40 or so lectures that we have conducted and today uh, expect that to be in the same uh, uh, direction uh, i will now uh, invite uh, dr balasamy to introduce the speaker and uh, the topic sir and you நான் ஏன் இவ்வாறு சொல்கிறேன் என்றால் இந்த வாழ்க்கை 
four months later, a Gandhi Rajan was not here. We do field searching and library searching for the name of this film. For textual sources, I am merely citing the primary sources, I am not citing the secondary sources here, which is Dr. Um, Narasamani's book, Korea Pali, which identifies this Ramayana as a particular Ramayana, and uh, which is the Rangana Ramayana, Sri Rangana Ramayana, Adilpur Ramayana. And there's a translation of available by Shantar Nagar as there are translations of many different Ramayanas in English. And of course, are my primary textual sources. And as I said, I've not listed the second sources. The visual sources. And we have, as part of an earlier project and subsequently, documented several different versions of the Ramayana from Sri Viliputu, Ramalinga Vilas, Ramanavatra, Adagarpoli, Masanta Mandamo, Tirkovar, Pudukum Tegaris. Kumbhakarnu Ramaswami Temple and Adhiyamanu Rupai. And the Ramayanas, the funny thing is, if you take all these Ramayanas and put them together, you will still not get the complete Ramayana. So you can imagine the extent of damage. I mean, I'll get Balaganda from one place, Ayodhya Ganda from another, Yudha Ganda from another, still, you know, we take all and put it together. We, we, we still will not recover the full Ramayana from this process. Um, I also got felt the need to, to, to go into the performance space of the Ramayana in order to bring it out better in animation. This is purely gold driven, cinematic gold driven. Okay? So we, I got a, a performance by uh, uh, many performances actually by Gandhi Ramdas Mahapati, who are performers from Dharma in Anandapur district. And uh, because at some point in time the film will have to speak language of gestures, um, I'm, not, I'm not imagining any dialogue, I'm not going to put in any dialogue, I'm very clear about that. This, I do, do not want it to be a language specific. So the expressions and the meanings thereof, I have to learn it from dance. Unfortunately, my dance, my daughter is a uh, dancer, and I learned it from her. Uh, in fact, once I came back from Chengam and I asked her to show me how will Sita walk into fire, and she did this. And I said, what, what is this you're doing? NCC Parade or what? She said, no, 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 we don't do anything in our school of dance when we walk towards the audience, we walk dead straight. It's only on the retreat we do all the embellishments. Okay. So that gave me an idea that Sita is not directly going to walk into fire. She will retreat and retreat with embellishments and then walk. And thereby in the animated film, you have the scope for building the dramatic potential, the delay process, which is inevitable to any narrative. Um, so those sources. And I also worked with the craftsman in LSD, particularly Kalamkari Ramachandraya, who incidentally is also a world record holder for the largest Kalamkari he's ever created. Uh, a Ramayana that is 70 feet by 40 feet on top. So these are the sources uh, uh, that I use to, to work on this book. So that is the research part of it. Um, I, I'm not going to go into all the details of the research, but there's one particular piece of discovery that I want to share with you, which was surprising. Um, uh, this is the segment or the scene where the war is over and Sita is going to be taken from Asuravana to Lama. Okay? And it is Lama's request that she be paid properly and that she be clad properly. So, um, in Tamaravan, he goes to the town all the Apsaras descend and prepare Sita. In Bali, um, Ramayana is a fairly straightforward, dry narrative. In Rangana um, Ramayana, which, which is what this Ramayana is, Trijala paints Sita, even as Sharma is holding out the sari for her to wear, with which Sita will go to If you see the next, this is the next scene. Sequence or the statement, Sita is in Palak Palaka. And there's a god standing in front. Who is it? We have no idea. We, we, because in, in the process of making the film, we also have the duty to identify every character painted in the viewer, without which we cannot. That there, there are and there will be unnamed characters, like musicians will not be named, but at least you must be able to identify the body, the profession or the cast or whatever else they may be. And people like me, nobody, nobody really 
had an answer to this until Uh, 
it's just a coincidence. I, I already know. Uh, but the thing is, so many new stories get introduced in this version, and this is one of them. And it was always very interesting to learn from different versions. But having seen this, probably now I know that I also hinge animate the characters. 
But the other part of the animation is basically hinging it. You know, you put a hinge on the wrist, on the elbow, on the shoulder. Uh, for men, you put a hinge on the crotch, and for women, you put a hinge on the hip. Okay, and, and that's how we move these uh, characters. The head alone, because it has to look both ways, forward and backward, is a separate stick, you know, which they can turn around to make this space. And we can pretty much follow the same style of animation to show how the painting involves, informs the animation and how the animation informs the painting, how they both inform the puppetry and how they all together inform the audience. You know, that dynamic is what is the most interesting uh, aspect of this. Okay, well, so this is uh, fortunate. I have the best writers in the world. For, for, for a film has to have a good skill. So we have, while we are young, we are all the writers I have. So, so it's, it's sitting there to be made. Uh, storyboard. Storyboard, uh, not only really, um, they do a screen play, but rarely you do this, do a storyboard. I mean, unless you are sufficient play, you don't do a storyboard for your films. And here we are. All the Ramayanas are split, sequenced, you know, placed frame by frame by frame with commentary on not like a comic book. You know, they like the label inscriptions. And this is waiting to be made and filmmakers are not looking at it. So the script, the screenplay, the storyboard, it's all there anyway. But so uh, the thing is, before you make the work that you do before you make the film is actually more important than the work that you do while you make the film. The pre-production is everything. Okay? And for us, the pre-production began eight years ago with Professor Balsa. Uh, we started documentation of murals um, all over the world. Um, it was a full foundation for the project of, of Sydney Mimi and Professor Barsam, yes, he was the project director. Um, we covered 11 temples. Uh, we started in the south, we started with Tripura in Madhu, we covered um, uh, Aradhan we covered all the Tripura murals, but we could not cover the north. Then the project was over in two years. Thereafter, I continued and I documented in individual capacity under the 22 locations. And what I have not done till, till now are the Tanjavu, which need not be done because ASI has done a very uh, neat job of it. Thurwaru, which again I need not do because the Indy Foundation has done a pretty decent job of it and released the book. And I still want to do it, but that's a new story. And Anirvan for which we never got the permission. And of course, Tanjavu also has very little to get the These are ASI. Through our movie, we were thrown out. We were not allowed to go. And I was not alone with that. David Shulman and Nikhil Adam, that we went there years ago, did permission and everything. And they said, you have to go to the photo. You do not have to go to the room of Madras from the Mandal. You know, which you cannot shoot. So, Shulman went back and came back years later and finally the book got there and everybody knows that story. So, documenting murals, that is what I call the big version, is, is a fairly difficult job. Okay. It's too much glow. No, but um, see, murals have to be documented always. It's okay now? Yeah. yeah. Murals have to be documented in a structural context. Um, this is the Tirukovan temple, for instance. Here you have the mural on this long curve. And you perceive the story when you walk out of the temple, not walk into the temple. And you perceive the story in totality when you walk out once, go in this way, and come out that way. Because the main part of the screen, and the two aisles are also there. And we, there's a flow of direction. You've got to come out, do this, and then come out. And only when you complete that, you, know, you perceive the story. So that structural context is absolutely essential to the documentation. The documentation uh, prior to this, most people documentation was kind of impressionistic documentation. Uh, people will take the camera, they will go and shoot what is decently preserved, what is likable, what can be subsequently written about and come back. But we did not approach like that. We would be photographed every square inch, whether there was any mural left in it or not. Whether there was only damage there or whether there was mural. All the areas that originally contained the murals, in whatever condition they existed, everything was. And the additional difficulty was in 
when we began this project, really, we had the camera, the digital cameras. It, it's, it's, it's inconceivable to film cameras. Uh, you, you can only go to digital cameras. The best digital cameras in, at that time was an 8 megapixel digital camera. And uh, I, I have a bit of a print production background, so I know that uh, an 8 megapixel camera can give me a print, a good quality print of the size of 8 inches by 10 inches. So if I wanted the entire view, which would be, you know, several hundred feet long, that means I have to compose these views every night as eight, within 8 inches by 10 inches. Okay, so all the views were shot in slices of, you know, you keep the camera like go like this. I mean, we, in the process we also accumulate parallax errors, but then, you know, we correct them later. We also have master shot, key shot, we also make spot drawings, we map the area, and so on. So everything is taken as 8 inches by 10 inches, in no matter what size of the mural, and then put it back together. Uh, so this is actually a good one that we've seen. Um, and we often have to work on ramps that are 15 feet high, so you know, you get close to the mural and you're not very uh, far away from it. Uh, the farther away is the, the more, more of the stuff. Sometimes the closer you get, so you have to have optimum, optimum distance, you do slightly um, Select like telephone lensing, so that the restaurants are minimized and should run across the daily technical aspects. Wasn't the one. This is very interesting. Uh, here the bureau is painted in such a way that when you go around the underground premise, the story finishes. In fact, here the artist has even left instructions saying, once you finish here, you please start again from the southeastern corner and look at the ceiling and go. And when you come back, you start again with the south, southeastern corner, look at the wall and go. So when you go around the fundamental price, you finish the same video. So there's an absolute structural context to it. And if that is just documentation is completely pointless. So that is the full number. And and so what we do is we first prepare maps. We don't shoot. But if you're shooting, we take one day to just simply prepare the maps. At that time, the camera crew were going and shooting around the temple uh, and, uh, you know, of general interest, location, geography, road life, uh, uh, you know, floral, uh, uh, whatever it is, you know. And we sit down and actually first prepare the map to scale and mark where the murals are and how the murals are actually divided, the space in, in, in terms of. For so this, this is region number one, this is region number two, and the wall is region number three. Um, and region number two, for example, is divided like this. And each side is also divided into slices. Okay, so there's one painting here. Each box represents one slice of, of, of the painting. And you see, you go, as you go clockwise, the orientation of the painting changes. Okay, so, so I, I've, got, I've got a website in which you actually click on this space. It will land you in that painting, which is painted in that space. Right now, I can't show the click action here. Uh, so that's that's how it's done. Um, and no two locations are alike. This is Tripura in the temple. Here, most beautiful place. Uh, all the paintings are inside the temple tower. It's inside these five tiers: one, two, three, four, five. Five tiers. And the first three tiers are. Substantially well preserved, probably the most well preserved mural paintings here because they are inside the temple tower and access to it is not as easy uh, as in the other spaces. Uh, so that does it. Here, here again, we map it. Uh, this is to give you a general idea of what one floor looks like. Uh, this is actually the floor plan to scale, and uh, this is the southern side of the tower, and that is the northern side. The southern side also has the stairwell because of which it's a bit smaller than the northern side. You enter here, you exit here, and once you enter, the painting begins here and goes downwards. Okay. So all the story is putting it here. And, and like in most cases, the mural paintings, they are painted in three registers at standing light, sitting light, and crouching light. Um, so at, at three registers, each register affords maybe a four hour. The length for our um, so, so what we do is we label this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Okay, so that, that's 
once we enabled that, and we documented, and we don't use the camera to capture, we use the computer to capture. Because the camera is always tethered to the computer, the camera cannot create a folder structure. But only the computer can create a folder structure. So we pre-create the folder structure. And so each image goes into that folder. I'll show you that. So that's our two routine methods. That's Sarah, but most of you might recognize him as the son of two or something like that. Um, there is Raji Kumar, who is the principal of the uh, Ron Bill paintings that, that I worked with. And Prasad is done his thing when I shot the picture. So, so as I said, you know, these are taken in eight, you know, this thing eight by ten, and then when they are put together as, as one single picture. Correcting for distortion, correcting for color, because we don't, we don't get even light. Okay? One side of the mirror will be velvet, the other side will be completely dark, and we have to compensate for all those and get, get what is most likely the truest representation of one another. And it's still colors. It can never be even person like it. So that's it. Yeah, that is structure. The white space in between is a pilaster.
So the distance between the pillar and the and the uh, ceiling is only a foot. And if I get that close and shoot, it's impractical. I mean, because you know we've got to go very very high uh, uh, to shoot them. In fact, at some point in time, I also considered scanning them. I bought some hand scanners, which are used for fabric scanning, actually, not so much for such rough surfaces. Uh, and I tried out, and it was decent, but I still can't get the resolution that I need. So luckily, we waited and waited and waited, and Satish bought this fancy 35 lakh, um, 80 megapixel perspective camera a few months ago, and I said, I will shoot this for me. So which basically meant we got up to a pedestal, which is halfway between the floor and the ceiling, and shot from there so that the arching pillars will be out of the camera's field of vision, which also meant we are increasing the uh, distortion a little bit because we got a wide angle lens instead of the normal lens. But we could correct the distortion there, right? I don't have to bring it back and correct it on the computer, which is what we earlier used to do. But we can correct it pretty much straight in the lines, straight in the vanishing points, right there with the camera. And that's what we got. So this is the final photo composite. So I can I can go still further, but uh, this this was actually taken in 16 parts. Uh, uh, you know, each we, we we basically divided as four large zones, uh, four squares. And each four, each square was in turn divided into four squares. Okay, and then so we had a 16, so 16 into 80 megapixels. That roughly translates to for me um, 80,000 pixels. Uh, but to be true to size, actually, I should have had in excess of 95,000 pixels. But 15,000 pixels is a sacrifice. It's okay. We can still, do it. I can get all the details that I need. <coughs> Beyond this, we only have to do archaeometric analysis of these paintings, and that's not available. Whatever can be optically achieved, whatever can be achieved through a normal optical lens, this is it's done. Do you want to see the other regions of the painting? Uh, I, I can go close and show it. Again, this is the famous Mandodari's uh, uh, humiliation. That's Ravana. Come back. So, some, in some places, I can even see, even if the painting is damaged, I can see the black line. I know faintly the black line can be perceived. That means it is possible for me to actually recover the, the, the drawing. Uh, the colors don't matter really, uh, because the colors cannot anyway be matched between the mural and whatever else on, on a computer. I really cannot. Get yeah, yeah, get those colors. This is the Sita with Agni Pravesa, and so on. Agni Pravesa. So uh, Chengam also had, Chengam has paintings that survive in the center, in the central square. Uh, originally, there must have been paintings on the aisle also, because nowhere will anyone paint just the little Though they have been wiped out without any trace, and in the aisle, the rest of the Ramayana must have existed. Uh, this So to, to summarize, we look at the pattern, occur large expanses of wall ceiling. Uh, there must be a of the context of the structure, which determines the division of theme, layout, composition, no, the whole works. And the photographer must be completely faithful and totally subservient to the whole uh, scheme of the original part.
this in order to be able to capture faithfully. Okay, so I have a host of the most well-known characters in my film uh, that India has ever known, but the characters are distressed. They are in a terrible shape. They really look like they are post-war. They all have suffered heavy damage. Um, so my role really for this that of the makeup man. I, I got to make them up. I got to get them afresh. Uh, okay. So the makeup is really a process of. I have not been able to do the Chengam Newells yet. I will be doing so subsequently. I finished the shoot the week before last. Uh, and all of last week was traveling. Uh, in fact, I came back this afternoon. And I will be starting this process of uh, tracing and recovering the Chengam Newell. So I will show you some earlier examples of how exactly I recover uh, the murals digitally. So this is the Tirupadayagur mural and uh, this is actually the original painting and this is a trace. When I say trace, it's not a paper trace, it's a digital stylus. What I do is I lock the image in one layer and uh, with a digital stylus and an LCD pad which gives me the picture, I actually trace. And this was one of the early uh, images that I traced because it was one of the better preserved and for me at that time when I did this seven years ago it was a low hanging fruit. It was easy for me to do it. It, 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 it was a very down straight forward task. So this is a fully recovered uh, uh, trace. Now a little more. Fully, fully recovered. Oh, it's scale independent. Yeah, it's scale independent. So for those of you who know, uh, computer can generate two types of images. One is the one is called raster image, which is also what the camera generates. And raster images, what the camera generates, are not scale dependent. In the sense, beyond a particular magnification, they will start breaking apart. Whereas the other type of art that you can produce in a computer is called vector art, which is scale independent art. One of the easy examples of scale independent art is font. You know, fonts, no matter how to large you make them, they don't, they don't break up on site because they are vector drawings. Um, so again, I have a print production background, so I wanted to recover it as a vector drawing. And vector drawings are not only scaling, they are also machine -made. Which means once you have this drawing, it's like having your logo. You can reproduce it on practically any surface. I mean, if you have a CNC and if you have a stylus, you can pretty much etch it on wood, metal, laser engrave it on any surface, you can put it on top, just simply perpetrate this art go down. You can, you can just simply produce mechanized art that was not possible ever before. And that is why colors are not important. If I'm going to etch it on wood, why do I need the color? Uh, if I'm going to etch it on metal, why do I need the color? So, but I resisted the temptation. I did not go to mechanical uh, I have not yet done a single flex yet with this material. I have not done any computer printers. Uh, in some cases, only fully recovered uh, uh, paintings on canvas. Which are pretty decent to present in that. I couldn't bring any of those today, I was a little less organized. I have come back with this after the hours I have those printers. This is much more of a challenge. Now, how do you recover this painting? This is gone. Completely gone. This is completely gone. So here the recovery is not straightforward. It's a, it's a big challenge. Right? This is how it is recovered. This is Panamalai. This is actually the oldest mural extent in the country. It is in Milpuram district, uh, on the way from Senji to Uri, on the uh, Not on the main road, slightly off. Okay, the, the, from the Palawa temples, you have the Kanjikuram temples. In, in the capital, you have the show temples, and you have one hilltop temple. That hilltop temple is this Palawa period, 7th century. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get into the aesthetics, but this is unsurpassed this, this particular uh, painting. Unfortunately, there is only one uh, difference. Now, I was trying to see, okay, how to recover this. Shivarama Murti gave three references. He said, this is the Sura Sundari in, 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 in Tripuram, and there is um, Mahamaya, and uh, one more reference he gave was, uh, I forget. Uh, but he was very obscure about the fact that the same reference exists in Kailas Nagar itself, which is now, portion of it is not kept locked. There is no locking access to it. Then I found this. 
It's the same image, except it's left side. Right. Now I know, therefore, how the arm should be less. What I try to do is I don't try to get creative or artistic in this. I try not to be creative. I try to be a complete copyist with as much fidelity to the original as possible. So until I actually find another reference, you know, that tells me this is what I should do. I don't, I don't, no, 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 this, basically. So this is how it is recovered. And in this recovery process, uh, which is also why I finally, uh, after having worked with, for five years, I did not look beyond the world. And the world does not have that. Okay, it's, it's got a great number of secular themes. It's got a few outstanding religious uh, 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 paintings. Uh, and I was attracted to it. I never could come out. Then I wanted to make a film. Okay, time, time, time is ticking. I, I want to make this film. I want to make it now. Then I said, I'll play safe. I'll play around. <laughs> you know, because there are seven locations from which I can get visual video. And there are other media can, from manuscript paintings and from uh, uh, you know, other practices of crafting get material. And that is where um, something really nice happened. That is, again, for, to make a film apart from script research, sorry, we need sets, right? So I start creating the sets. The sets being Kalamkari replicas of actually actual one to one Kalamkari replicas of this plant. So I made actual size printouts on paper, but subsequently on tracing paper. And this tracing paper, the colors the artist will take and he will powder trace it on this cloth. And first get the line outline. And once the outline is given, I give him a color model, photograph picture, I take the location and show, and it, from some place it is full of small pigments that fall off show that as well and uh, they work with and they infuse the dyes uh, in, in an approximation to the, the neural color pattern. Um, initially they were also copies, the, the Columbia artists that I worked with, they were also copies. So they would take my line of and trace it and work with it. That's the actual neural with me. Uh, the actual Kalamkari painting uh, held outside the Tripurai Madhu temple, uh, outside the Gorum, where it is in the real sense. So he is the artist now I work with. It was it is nice that I discovered him kind of fortuitous circles. It's, it's, in in Kalasti, most of the art form is like applied art. Um, people who do sarees and pets, pets and t shirts. And, they do chemicals and so on. This guy is steadfast. He does not do any of those things. He still does only one fine things, only, only fine art, and only natural colors. And he's very young. He's first generation artist. He's not, you know, several generation artist. It seems he seems to have learned from uh, uh, better. Uh, so I look at him. <coughs> this is uh, mural that I recommend. This is what you see on the left is the actual mural. This is the Outline uh, drawing of it, and this is the color very clock with the dice that is used approximately. The, the substantial difference in color that you see is because of one reason, not because you cannot get the colors right. What I do, there is one principle of color correction that I do, only one principle, which is this must have been originally white, correct? This region must have been originally white, okay? Look at the amount of yellow and brown. Okay. So take out that much of yellow and brown from the rest of the painting. Take that to be the average. Okay. If you take out that much of yellow and brown from the rest of the painting, okay, what color palette will it approximate to? It will be something like this. Okay. Again, some approximate. Nothing is occurring. I mean, pigments and dyes cannot match each other 100%. Pigments and computer colors are completely different. Okay. So in a computer, the color is light. On the wall, it is reflected. So they can never be the same way. So that's one. That's one of the. I, I, I have a few of, of these, but unfortunately, I cannot exhibit them. Now, if I want to make a film, I need music. Now, if I take a film like this and take it to music, like 
it's one of the most vexatious things that happens is they put Ghana in Okay? Because that's all they are. They perceive temple as sacred space, Carnatic music as sacred, and then you know it's very, very difficult to get them out of that mindset and make them do something else. So I decided to look at musical instruments featured in the paintings. Okay? I mean, the paintings themselves suggest the music. And actually, the nice thing about it is, about it is this: you don't have to actually look beyond it. Either. You look at it again and again. That tells you what. Nobody 
perceived as an archive. People generally perceive it as some kind of decorative medium, but there, there is a potential in Galamkari for it to be seriously considered as an archival medium. Is something is one of the realizations of the filmmaking, and thereby the filmmaking becomes an act of conservation itself uh, as well. So that is the end of what I was talking about. Sitting there, and it's the Yudhagano. And actually, it's there are four sides. One side is really the Potabishay. There's, the, there's no story, and that side is also undivided. It's, it's a full size Potabishay. Uh, there you only have to identify the characters and bring them back. The other three sides have stories, and this is where working with what I do, how, how do I recover this? Now, I will go and trace what is first, I will go and trace what is missing. What is invisible, I won't trace. I will put it down. I will put it down and call the Kalakari artists and start working with them. They give me the missing line, they know the Ramana. Okay? They know the character, they know the costume, they know the intellectuals, they know everything. And if they train on this for about three or four days, they can easily adopt this type. Okay, so they actually are conservators for me. They give me the missing things uh, of, of, of the story, of the, of the parts that I myself don't know, or the parts for which I have to consult way too many uh, sources, which could be very time okay. So they fill in the, the missing lines, and in fact, what I do is I have this principle of it. In, 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 in text, when you do data entry, for instance, you ask two different people to do data entry. You don't ask one person. Uh, why? Because no two people can make the same mistakes. Uh, okay. There will be one set of mistakes here and another set of mistakes here, but they will not be the same. So when I combine the document, I will go for So I actually work with two artists, blind. One person does not see the other. Okay. So I work with one, one artist in Kala Vizdi, and I work with another artist in Tanjabu, in um, Chikal Nagi. Okay. So I give it to these two sources, and if they actually converge, that means I hit the name, I'm right. Uh, if, if they actually happen to them, but if they diverge, then you know there's more work to be done in the day. I have to approach that. I'm going to re-examination of the lines that are there and more. Work. So once that line is done, that is taken back into the vector line. Um, it's extrapolated into the vector line. Then I will get the vector line. And that vector line output will, will, will become the formal basis for all kinds of you know, creative activity, subsequent. You know, that's that's all. Good. Okay, that's okay. So that, that's one extra slide I forgot to do. Uh, so this is really the objective is to, to bring together the process of the recovery and the recons. Today, for instance, you know, it's, it's pretty sad. Um, all these artists work, but they don't have access to any of these materials. They sit and paint from memory. That's it. And therefore, their repertoire gets narrow and narrow and narrow and narrow. Guys, you know, if you can actually take this material to them, uh, and if you can take them to this material, okay, both will be enriched. Uh, so that's one of the main examples. I always felt needed to be done that way. And again, if if I go and tell someone, uh, look, I want to do a Galapagos cloud. People say, eh, I have thought of it before too. So just do it. Don't even talk about it. Just get it done first. Okay? Then show it. <laughs> and then and then let's have a time. You know, that is really my approach. Um, in fact, a lot of people have said this to me. I mean, a lot of one of the things about our art school in is it trains you to be a canvas artist uh, in the modern European idiom, uh, which is ego, money, fame. Nothing wrong with that. It's today's world. But those guys say to me, I can do this with my left hand. Yeah, I, you can probably do, do this drawing with your left hand, but do you know the goddamn story? Uh, do you know what Ramayana is? Have you ever heard it? Uh, uh, you know, probably. Have you ever bothered to read the Ramayana? All you do is, you know, copy Rembrandt. Uh, uh, you know, co copy Van You don't know. So, don't, don't say, you know, I can do this with my left hand. So, that, so, do and show. Show and tell. You know, if you theorize, you don't get anywhere because you know they, they, there are only people ready to put you down rather than to say you know yeah what you do is because art schooling has become like that. So the Kalantari artists don't merely replicate it for me; they are collaborators in recovering this story. They are actually playing the role of conservators. You know, and what do we do today in terms of conservation? Only chemical engineers go there. No artist ever goes there. 
<laughs> you know, pure chemical engineers go there. There's a, the, our conservation work is the most artless conservation we can see anywhere in the world. No artist is even allowed anywhere. Um, finally, there was a Chandru Ghatwan project, and it was so terrible an experience for them. He said, they returned the money. He returned the money to me. I don't know. For the Kutal. So that's what happens. There is no real understanding or appreciation of the art. So the musicians are in source the music. Why outsource the music? Why go to the music director? Why go to the imaginary space? Use the mural itself as the source for everything. Do you have all those musical instruments? Yes, most of them are recommended. Most of them are. See, the thing is, that's one of the things about the Nayaka. Most of the vestiges of the Nayaka period are still there. You can find it, whether it is clothing, costume, uh, music, dance, uh, anything. The, the pre modern period can actually be encountered, recovered somewhere, in some, in, in some place. If you go after it, chances are 99% you will find it. Yeah. Uh, one so, my project was I funded, funded incidentally by uh, the India Foundation of the Arts. And, uh, I didn't know that what their process of selection was, but it was actually peer review and blind, double blinded peer review, like in a normal academic uh, process. And the um, comment given was, yes, digital tracing must be done, and people do not understand the value of it because that I, didn't, I had not perceived that role of it until it was recommended by the peer review that if ever they attempt a physical reconstruction, the digital can be used as a model for it. Okay, because in the computer we have an undo. I can make any number of mistakes and then correct myself. The physical source I don't touch and lost. It's, it's irreversible in the process. So in a, in a certain sense, if ever actual physical conservation has to be attempted, de facto it must become compulsory, it must become mandatory for us to first digitally do the recovery and have computer models that can then be and that was I had, I, I had missed that. I had not understood it, but the peer review, review had come. Um, so the art goes back to the art. It's not to the Epson printer. In this case, yeah, I, I do take printers, but that's that's a that's a byproduct. Um, so and different people can work. I'm like we are a large team. I'm 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 representing really a large team. I'm not even as a person. See, there are photographers, there are historians, there are musicians, there are you know all kinds of dancers, all kinds of people can find a space to work with this meeting. And therefore, everything should be more available. Everybody should come together. And, and that is the way work it is. And another thing that I plan to do is, it's a little bit fuzzy in my mind right now, but um, all the vector drawings that I recommend, I'll make open source. I won't protect them. So people can take and do anything with it. They want. They want to put it on wedding cards. Let them do it. They want to put it on t-shirts and make money. Let them do so. Uh, the vector drawings. I will share them openly. Uh, I will protect the film that I make, and uh, okay, I'll protect the kalamkari, uh, the that I make. But the drawing. Why? Because I think there is a, especially in Tamil Nadu, uh, where we have a fantastic combination of tribalism and Marxism. The there is an alarming decline in the state of public art. More so than any other state. I mean, you can still get artists from Kerala, Orissa, Bengal, Maharashtra. From Tamil Nadu, it's become almost impossible to get artists. You know, the decline of uh, standard of art, the decline of public art is so drastic. And it has been so drastic in the last 30 years. One of the ways that can be intervened with an actor of is to make our own art freely available to, to be so that they can use it. You know, uh, commercially or for any other purpose. So, most of the, I have not done so yet, by the end of this project, uh, I will put all those drawings out in the, in the open for people to do whatever they want under Creative Commons uh, uh, license. So that's another one. So that's really the summary. OPM, uh, OPM is other people's money. Uh, finally, to make a film, you need OPM, you need other people's money. And the other people's money that I got was one from the India Foundation for the Arts. Um, they saw my project and uh, 
they rejected the price on the fourth time attempt, they accepted it. Uh, but more gratifying for me was, uh, one day I got a call from Dr. Aigao and said, look, I have a friend from US, a doctor, who wants to visit a couple of Nami sites. Will you ask Gandhi to take him? And I said, Gandhi Rajan is in Madurai, right? I'll take him. So I took him around. His name is Ramaya Krishna, he's a practicing surgeon in Florida. And um, so I happened to travel in two days with him. And um, he, in the process, we got talking. He goes around with a metal detector. So he was searching Jambai, uh, Negamur Patti, and Tundu for coins and things like that to see whether any kind of metals can be detected. And he got to go to the product of the set. Came back, his parents and his and other said, Next morning, come, come, come home and see. So I go there. It makes me wait only for two minutes, not much longer. And puts wads of cash in front of me and say, take it. He said, what for? He said, good for your project, take it. Then after some persuasion, I took it. And I came back home and had a very tough time with my daughter and wife. Just trying to justify my having accepted it. But that spontaneous, uh, uh, you know, grant of an individual was actually for me much more worth than the idea. So that is all. Then the third component that is not mentioned there is the financial disaster called the Pascal. <laughs> so, so that's no, that's the OPM and IPM. Of, of. Thank you.
including, in fact, the Tamil Nadu Tourism Department has 3D captures of all, all of the more prominent temples. Mm -hmm. um, 3D captures okay for no uh, You are talking 3D captures, the photographic captures that you do the panoramic view. Right? Yeah. The yeah. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about 3D capture with the laser set of things. So no, you see, but as I said, I have not been able to use any archaeometric process so far. If, if you have to use archaeometric processes, that means you've got to work with labs. Okay? Um, uh, for instance, you can do sonar ana analysis. I mean, there, uh, there, there, there's a, there are many papers about it. There are uh, at least 12 different types of instrumentation to study paintings, uh, do pigment analysis, to, to study the decay of paintings, to study the pattern in the decay of paintings, and whether it is moisture lead, whether it is you know, salt lead or what kind of, you know, there are so many archaeometrical methods, but no, I have not worked with any of them. And you ought to be uh, working closely with a lab, maybe a, a lab in IIT, maybe a lab in some government department, and most of the equipment that you, you get for that is also classified. It's not available to, to, to uh, the common. Uh, only optical photography is free here, it's the market available. Uh, working, yeah, it's, if, if I get a chance, I will, I will do so. Uh, but I haven't had a chance to work with any labs. Okay, second question. Uh, this is the question I wanted to ask pretty much every speaker who comes and talks here, but I ask you first. What motivates you to do this? <laughs> no, okay, say, that's a really uh, pertinent question for, uh, for me. Because you know what, see, it's not as if I went to art school and I studied art and I was always attracted to it or anything like that. There, the, the person who's responsible for the whole thing is sitting to the, to the extreme right of you. I worked in this project in 2004, and then I was sitting on this fantastic video. Okay. Um, and I had some free time. I thought it better to you know, do this drawing rather than to watch a film. I haven't watched a film in five years. Uh, well, once I started doing this, this was more engaging. And, and so it is more a question of, you know, often you don't have to go in search of anything. You know, you pretty much you know, get what you have and start working with it, and somehow that ends up being more rewarding. You know, it's really that. It's 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 kind of accidental. I was the default custodian of the material for some time. So I started working with it, exploring the opportunities that offered it, uh, and also the kind of skills that I acquired prior to working with the material and while working with it. You know, it's really good. I will be there physically. 
but I should be replaced. So it, 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 I have to work out the persistence that, that, that the artists also feel a little bit funny to trace. I'm an original artist, but I don't like the original artist. Which is understood. These two uh, media should always, at one point, must definitely be I mean, let, let me put it this way. If I go back and I'm mm -hmm. an uh, an artist, and I want to see the video, I think I'm going to commission. And I have to show the king what I'm going to do with my paper, what I'm going to do. What will it do? There's no paper. I'll probably do quick mock-ups and talk and show it. So I must have been familiar with both the media. Uh, okay? And you know, mentioned in books, I don't know the veracity of the design. But it's also equally true that um, sometimes uh, 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 a painting that I was copied of the cloth, the princess will use the palace uh, and gets my own place from the kingdom. So they have copies of that. You know? So these work related parts. The disconnect is it, it happened in modern uh, 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 period, in post period. So, so today, you know, there is that school which is sitting there and it's, and it's, and it's living in a rabbit hole and doing that. They only have one master's to open and what they were and go and study it. But they must at one point I think definitely. I mean I have not gone through that. My 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 predisposition is not academic. It's, it's more practice -oriented. Try and um, perpetuate uh, not theorize and get into the history. So I'm not bothered to really get into those details. But look at the common sense, they must have been. By the time the project comes to a photo of the project, I'm going to Please don't make me come. Actually, the camera is the middle axis. No, I didn't buy the camera. This is his camera. This is his camera. Do you foresee a day when your technique can be used to really reconstruct a mural in the temple? It should be possible. See, there are I'll tell you what all the things um, Some amount of distortion is in the middle. Because what we see, perceive as a flat surface, we can actually go close to it. It's not flat. It's got some undulations. Okay. So I will have to idealize and take a flat surface. Okay. So to that extent, there will be distortion. But I have actually taken the real size skyscraper output of mine and gone to play the book, kept it on the original painting and so on. Okay. The variation is less than the <laughs> the variation is less than 2%. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it, it is uh, possible to come up with a fairly accurate model uh, with the uh, digital reconstruction that can ultimately be used for the physical reconstruction. And that has, was also what was modeled in the referee of the project. Yeah, all these 
whites that you see, what do you think they are? Plaster. No. I mean, what does it do to? It's actually what the seepage is about. Okay. Yeah, okay. See, what about each, each of this is actually one stone slab. Okay. Once you cut, once it's all covered with plaster, you don't perceive the stone slab. Okay. And there's water seepage from above and that comes and gets below and starts spreading. And every time these grids, the so-called conservators, when they go, instead of going putting plaster on top to prevent the uh, uh, seepage of water, they will go and touch it from the bottom and do nonsense. <laughs> That's, that's the kind of question. Ridiculous. I mean, this is, this is like common. You don't even have to be educated or you have gone to college to understand uh, uh, you know, the so-called expert. That's really what they do. And do it repeatedly without fail. Uh, uh, um, people who are 
have some level of interest in history, the arts, and everything. But hopefully, once the anime, the film is ready, I'll start talking to children. Uh, you know, that's that's really the goal there. You know, then you know, you suddenly you have a different audience and, and a different kind of feedback and a different kind of creativity coming into the entire, entire whole whole process. Uh, you know, creativity is something good.